Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can determine the type of function we're working with based on just a table of values. So in Algebra 1, we do this. We work through and talk about, OK, how do we know it's a linear function? How do we know it's quadratic, exponential, so on and so forth? And so those are the three main types of functions we're going to focus on in this video as well. But we do know how we can identify a cubic function, a polynomial function to the fourth power, to the fourth degree, um, so on and so forth. So if we look at linear, we see that the first differences are constant. And we're talking about our y values here. So for linear, we look at our y values. If it looks like we have a common difference between our y values, then it's linear. For quadratic, it would be our second differences. So we take the differences of our first differences. Um, and that pattern just continues on, so on and so forth, depending on what our degree is. So for um, a polynomial with a degree of 3, the third difference is degree of 4. The fourth difference is would be constant, so on and so forth as we increase that degree. And now for exponential, our y values have a common ratio. So in that case, we are multiplying um, by something, by a, a number, to go from one y value to the next, right? Even if it looks like our y values are decreasing, we want to say we're multiplying by a fraction rather than we're dividing, right? So if it looks like we're dividing by 4, we're going to say we're actually multiplying by 1 fourth, right? We know it does the same thing, but for exponential, we want to focus on that constant factor that we're multiplying by rather than dividing. So we do have three examples in this video. Um, and you guessed it, one's going to be linear, one's going to be quadratic, and one is going to be exponential. So let's start with number one. So with all of these tables of values, we want to make sure that our x values are just increasing by a constant amount, right? Increasing or decreasing. So for number one, we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So that, that's good. So now we can focus our attention just on the y values. So we have 243, 81, 27, 9, and 3. So our numbers are decreasing. But we're decreasing pretty quickly, right? So it does appear to be exponential. And the reason it is exponential is because we are multiplying by something by a constant factor each time we go to the next y value. And that would be 1 third, right? So our, it is an exponential function. Um, and our common ratio there would be 1 third. All right, number two, we go uh, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6. So our x values are constant. We're just increasing by 2. That's OK. And now we look at our y values, 13, 5, 13, 37, and 77. So obviously, we're not multiplying by anything there. So let's find our differences. So 13 minus 5, 5 minus 13, 13 minus 37 would be negative 24, and 37 minus 77 would be negative 40. So right off the bat, we see, hey, those, those are our first differences. Those are definitely not constant. Um, and so we're going to say this is for sure not linear. Um, so now let's find our next differences. Okay, So 8 minus negative 8 would become 8 plus 8. Negative 8 minus negative 24, negative 8 plus 24, also 16. And negative 24 minus negative 40, or negative 24 plus 40, 16. So this is what we're talking about with our second differences. And so in this case, we're going to say this table represents a quadratic function because those second differences are constant. All right. So for number one, we had exponential. Number two, we had quadratic. So I bet you can guess what type of function we're going to have on number three. So we look at our x values, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, increasing by threes there. That's great. It's constant. So now let's take our attention to the y values. So we have 18, 14, 10, 6, and 2. So it does look like we are just subtracting 4 each time, right? So if I think about it the same way I did number 2, um, 18 minus 14 would be 4, 14 minus 10, 10 minus 6, 6 minus 2, right? So those would be our first differences. And those are constant. So yes, you guessed it, number 3 would be a linear function, right? And that's how we can determine whether we have a linear, exponential, or quadratic function from a table of values.